Okay, these are the different uh, support parts of our nervous system. Uh, one of them is the neuroglia, which translates to nerve glue. Their function is to the central nervous system. Okay, so now keep in mind, write this down. The central nervous system is considered the brain and the spinal cord. Everything else is considered the peripheral nervous system, or PNS. Okay, so neuroglia is found in central nervous system, which would include the brain and the spinal cord. And its job is to help support, insulate, and protect the nerves. We'll look at these here, the astrocytes, microglial cells, ependymal cells, and oligodendrocytes. Here's an animation of what they look like, what the astrocytes look like. Astrocyte, or astrostar, so this has a star-like appearance. Here we have the microglial cells, the ependymal cells with cilia, and the oligodendrocytes with myelin. Okay, astrocytes consist about half of nervous tissue. Their ends will cling to neurons. So let's go back to show you how they cling to neurons there. Their job is to brace anchor and supply nutrients through blood and capillaries. They are part of the vascular supply of the neuron itself, and they act as a protective measure to the brain. And they will pick up excess chemicals, ions, and neurotransmitters. The microglial cells, uh, these are spider-like. They have phagocytic properties to them which is a type of Pac-Man. So phagocytes like to eat things. And we have lots of different phagocytes in our body. A lot of that will cover an AMP2 when we get to blood and immune system. And the microglia will also help dispose debris, including dead brain cells and bacteria. Our ependymal cells line the cavity of the brain and spinal cord. You do find those hair-like projections called cilia. Anytime you see cilia, it is designed to move things. In this case, they will circulate the cerebrospinal fluid, CSF. Okay, oligodendrocytes wrap around the nerve fibers and this wrapping is a fatty insulin uh, uh, insulating covering called myelin sheath. Okay, now that is the support within the central nervous system. Okay, the other facts about the glia, they're not able to transmit nerve impulses, so they don't actually uh, emit an electrical activity. The glia can divide and they don't usually lose this ability where neurons can lose the ability to divide but glia can divide and then the brain tumors typically are abnormal growths or neoplasms of the glia and they call them gliomas okay in this one we're going to look at the peripheral nervous system support and here we have Schwann cells Okay, the Schwann cells eventually form the myelin in the PNS. Okay, now oligodendrocytes are found in the central nervous system and they give rise to the myelin in the central nervous system, whereas the Schwann cells give rise to the myelin in the peripheral nervous system. Okay, we also find satellite cells which uh, aid in protection and cushioning the cell body of the neuron. Okay, a nerve, uh, their job is to transmit a nerve impulse. Okay, so to do this, we need dendrites. Okay, dendrites have incoming signals to the cell body. And then eventually the, um, the nerve signal is concentrated down the axon hillock. Okay, so it gets concentrated down here 
where the signal will eventually uh, transmit down the entire neuron here. Okay, now notice I'm jumping over the myelin. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the nerve signal goes all the way down to the axon terminals where your neurotransmitters are released. Okay, and then uh, the neurotransmitters will hit the postsynaptic membrane telling it what to do and the neurotransmitter will either be acetylcholine or epinephrine nor epinephrine. Okay, now I'm simplifying the uh, uh, neurotransmitters um, but you know so for right now it's either going to be a parasympathetic uh, response or a sympathetic response. Parasympathetic is acetylcholine and sympathetic is epinephrine norepinephrine. So when those neurotransmitters hit tissue it will tell the tissue to either be in rest and digest mode or fight or flight mode. Okay, the cell body of that neuron is the metabolic center. It has a rough endoplasmic reticulum called the missile substance and neurofibrils to help maintain the cell shape. Nerves can be microscopic in size all the way up to about three to four feet in length like the nerve that goes from your low back all the way down to your big toe. Okay, each neuron you can have up can have hundreds of dendrites which um, so here's that cell body and the dendrites are what are those branches that bring the signal into the cell body but it does have only one axon that extends off that axon hillock that we looked at earlier okay the axon hillock has these parallel microtubules inside this is what's going to help concentrate the signal down that cone-shaped structure that will continue down the axon we also will have uh, a collateral branch, which means there's a nerve um, that will branch off of the main nerve, so it's a collateral branch. And then eventually we have the axon terminal, which is the end of the axon where the neurotransmitter will hit tissue. And that's the vesicles that are inside. <coughs> and uh, those vesicles are what will contain and release those neurotransmitters. Okay, and then we talked about this uh, when we did muscles. Um, you have the axon, axon terminal, and then uh, a neurotransmitter is released, like acetylcholine, for example. and it will hit postsynaptic tissue and it goes across the synaptic cleft to do that and once it hits that tissue something's going to happen a muscle contraction um, you know whatever there's tons of obviously our, our nerves operate everything in our body so our tissues will respond to it Okay, the myelin itself is a white fatty material that covers the nerve. So you're seeing um, the myelin here. And its job is to protect and insulate and increase the transmission rate of a nerve impulse. So earlier when I was drawing those um, on, the, on the nerve, when I was drawing the nerve signal it was jumping the uh, myelin so I did that on purpose because that's how the nerve signal trans transmits it jumps over each myelin and hits the gaps which are called node of Ranvier which we'll look at that in a second and uh, this helps increase the speed of a nerve impulse Okay, the Schwann cells that are found in the peripheral nervous system, that's what this statement is saying. The Schwann cells are found in the peripheral nervous system. 
are myelinated and they will wrap themselves around the axon and uh, once it's done as it keeps wrapping it's uh, you're left with the myelin okay the neurolemia which is here the neurolemia is more superficial um, to the myelin so it's on top of the myelin so in the event a nerve is damaged, the neurolemia provide, provided it stays intact can regenerate. Okay, the node of Ranvier, these are the gaps in between the Schwann cells. <clears throat> so when we have our, uh, there's the Well, let's just draw the axon, and then we'll draw the myelin. <coughs> There's the axon terminal. And then the nerve signal is going to come down and jump over and hit the gaps. Those gaps are called the node of Ranvier. Okay, this condition, MS or multiple sclerosis, this is where the myelin sheaths get hard. They become sclerotic. Okay. So when this habit happens, the rate of nerve transmission down the axon is slowed down because the myelin is becoming sclerotic. And uh, one of the things you start to see is muscle weakness. So the ability to control muscle is inhibited. MS is considered an autoimmune disorder where the protein component of the sheath is attacked. Um, so um, medically, you know, there are some things they can do to slow it down. Uh, I have some MS patients and I use some naturopathic uh, MS protocols, which is really trying to reduce the inflammatory response. And there's some really good nutraceuticals and diet and lifestyle stuff that you can do to help significantly reduce the inflammatory response to the myelin sheath, which will slow down the process. Okay, and uh, adjustments and other treatments can help. They have been helped shown to help uh, MS patients. Okay, the nuclei are cell bodies found within the central nervous system. So the protection of the vertebral column is essential to the health and wellness of these cell bodies. Okay, we talked about that first week of class from that journal, spine journal about uh, spinal health. Now remember, your, your nervous system, brain and spinal cord and all its nerves, function everything. So to keep them healthy is important. The healthier your nerve, your nervous system, the healthier you are. The more unhealthy your nervous system, the more dysfunction you're going to experience. So these cell bodies do not usually go undergo cell division after birth. And the cell body does carry out most of the metabolic function of the neuron. So if it's damaged and the cell dies, it is not replaced. Now, we're not going to go down this route, but I will just make a quick note. Uh, this is where your stem cell research is coming from because of this concept. Um, you know, they're really trying to do some stem cell research to try to actually grow damaged nuclei and cell body stuff that your body cannot regenerate on its own. Okay, ganglia, so here is a ganglia. A small collection of cell bodies found outside the central nervous system. The sensory neuron is inside of it, so if you look closely you can see this blue sensory neuron. And these sensory neurons are always found in the ganglia outside the central nervous system. And if you'll notice, uh, we'll get into this in more detail later. Here's, your, here's a cross-section of the spinal cord. 
we have the gray matter, which is this butterfly-shaped thing, which we'll also talk about later. And then this is the white matter, which is myelin. So it gives it that white appearance. <clears throat> okay, this is the posterior aspect of the spinal cord, and this is the anterior aspect of the spinal cord. And sensory nerves always go in the posterior aspect. Okay, sensory information goes in the uh, posterior aspect of the cord. Motor goes out the anterior aspect. <coughs> so there's your blue or sensory or afferent. And there's your red motor or efferent. Okay, this one, uh, there's a diagram under the uh, online on our page. If you scroll down to almost the bottom of the page, you'll see other documents. It's a title under other documents. And you're going to see, uh, so this diagram is there. Okay, so we're going to come back to that because um, that's going to be a very detailed discussion. Okay, um, nerves are, is what these tracks are called. So we have these different tracks in our peripheral nervous system, which is something we're going to dive into. So, for example, uh, here's our tracks. You can see track, 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 track. So we have all these tracks on this side, tracks. Okay. So we have tracks uh, in the peripheral nervous system, and then they go into the spinal cord, the central nervous system, and they go up to the brain and then down the brain. Okay, So blue is sensory, so that's afferent, body to brain. Red is motor, which is brain to body, or descending pathways. Okay, Now, do understand that the blue that you see here these sensory or ascending pathways are found on both sides. And the red that you're seeing, the ascend, excuse me, the descending pathways or efferent is found on both sides. They just simply removed the descending pathways from here and they removed the ascending pathways on this side just to not make it look so busy. But in reality, you find the ascending and descending on both sides of the cord. Okay, so there's the white matter that we said earlier was myelinated. You're seeing all that here. So there's the myelin stuff. <coughs> okay, and then the gray matter is unmyelinated. So there's your green matter. That butterfly shaped part is the gray matter where you find the cell bodies. Okay, we also have this association or interneuron. So information comes in, it does go up to the brain, comes back down, but we also have this association neuron for communication within the uh, gray matter. It does connect the sensory to the motor pathways. Okay, the three different types of nerves you'll typically see, multipolar neurons, these are the motor neurons, the most common type that we have. And then we have these bipolar neurons, typically seen in the eyes. And then these unipolar neurons, uh, which are sensory neurons found in the peripheral nervous system ganglia. Okay, we have nine different types of sensory receptors. Um, but we're going to look at five in particular, okay, and, and please know these. In no particular order, we have the naked nerve endings, which is responsible for pain and temperature interpretation. Naked nerve ending nerves, sensory nerves, are responsible for our pain and temperature interpretation. Meisner corpuscles, responsible for touch, like a basic handshake, you know, you put your hand in your lap, that kind of thing, basic touch. The 
Pacinian corpuscles are responsible for deep pressure, like a very hard handshake that's not really painful, but deep, okay? Or like a deep uh, massage kind of thing. So deeper pressure, Pacinian corpuscle. And then uh, the Golgi tendon organs, which is for balance and proprioception. That's what that means, balance, proprioception, found in the tendon, Golgi tendon organ. And then the muscle spindle found in the, the belly of the muscle, which is also responsible for proprioception or balance. Okay, so this one is, A is my, uh, naked nerve ending for pain. B, um, Meisner's light touch. C, nerve, sensory nerve. Pacinian corpuscle, deep pressure. And then here's our tendon, um, Golgi tendon organ, and here's muscle spindle. Now, by the way, this is where my dry needling, well, it's not my technique, you know, but it's the technique that I use, uh, it becomes very effective. So when you hit those Golgi tendon organs, um, by stimulating them through the technique or hit the muscle spindle, you're going to reset the spasm, the misfiring, that abnormal aberrant proprioceptive input. It does a massive reset, which is what calms down the muscle and increases function to that area. One of the reasons why it's such an effective technique.